now when you're in the field, you know, all this experience and time later, what is your creative process? Do you go into it with a story you already want to tell? Are you more, I'm going to hang back and just see what happens and wait for the moment? I am so loosey goosey. If you have not uh, listened to Paul's or read Paul Paul Nicklin's book on uh, how to become a National Geographic photographer, you should because it's a poster case for how I shoot. He talks about, you know, I think it's the 20, 30, 20, whatever it is, 30, 30, 40. The first part of your time, you spend it creating something that's sure. You know, it's a proper exposure. It's a good composition. It's good enough for an editor to say, okay, there's a picture of a turtle. <laughs> the second 30% of your time, you start taking some chances. You know, can I photograph it from a different angle? Can I put a little bit of strobe in it? You know, can I get some motion? And and that's my sweet spot. That's where I like to work, you know, a right. little more creative, even though it has a much higher risk of failure. I oftentimes come back with something that's quite unique because the question that I need to ask myself any time I approach a subject is if so many photographers have already photographed something like this before, how do I make it different? How do I make it my own? Right. The last 30% of your time in the field you just spend it going crazy. You know, what happens <laughs> if I go with a very, very long exposure? What happens if I overexpose two stops? You know, just really experiment and try to come back with something wild. And those shots sometimes become quite iconic. Mm-hmm. 